The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everybody. This is Suraj here from Rapid Leverage. Uh, good evening. If you're watching this live, uh, it's, it's just gone 7.30 here in London. I know we've got people watching this live from different parts of uh, the world. And those of you watching the recording of this, um, you'll be watching this where sometimes in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, uh, because this is going to be uh, recorded and put inside the premium section of Rapid Leverage Forum, as are all of our other webinars. I'm excited today for a number of reasons. Uh, firstly, because we've got a good friend of mine who I've known for a little bit of time now, uh, Stuart Murray, who's going to be talking to us about mobile marketing and SMS marketing. Um, I met Stuart. We were actually both speaking at the same conference uh, earlier this year, and we've got to, we've got to know each other uh, across the rest of the year. Stuart's come to our London IM meetups uh, a couple of times this year, and it's been great getting to know him and, and what he does. I'm also excited because it's this is our last webinar of the year or for 2012. Uh, I guess that won't make any sense if you're watching the recording of this, but for those of you listening in live, uh, you know, it, it's been a great year for us at Rapid Leverage. We've gone over the 700 member mark, so we've built a, a fantastic community, and I want to thank everyone listening to this live or recorded. Uh, it's part of, you, you form the community, and it's, a, it's been a pleasure uh, being part of that with you. So, like I said, Stuart Murray is a good friend of mine who is the go-to guy for mobile marketing and SMS marketing. Earlier today, uh, Stuart sent me an email with uh, a little bit of a test uh, a test thing that he set up where I could send an SMS to a certain number uh, with a certain keyword and receive some information back. Now that was just amazing in terms of the potential that I was thinking about for local businesses or for speakers if you speak on stage um, or if you want to use that as a call to action on your, on your websites or your blogs or your squeeze pages and what have you. So where rather than uh, ask for an opt-in by email or or something like that, you can ask for an opt-in via SMS. So in this case, it was text rapid to 64411 uh, or something similar to that. And, and Stuart's going to share that with you in a moment. And I was able to receive information back like that. And I'm sure that would then drop my number into some sort of database. So for marketing purposes, this is brilliant. Um, and I'm looking forward to hearing what Stuart has to say. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to... Uh, ask Stuart to take over the presentation and 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 let you uh, let you in on his secrets. Just before I I sort of mute myself, if anyone does have any questions throughout the webinar, I'm going to be monitoring. So feel free to uh, to ask your questions in the question box, and I'll be uh, interrupting Stuart at the appropriate time to ask any questions. Uh, if not, then I'll leave them until the end. So without any further ado, uh, I'd like to introduce to you Stuart Murray. Uh, he's going to be talking to us about mobile and SMS marketing. Stuart, over to you. Awesome. Thank you very much for that introduction, Siraj. And uh, yes, the number was actually 64414, which I'll cover off a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, but absolutely, if you texted the word rapid, you'll see uh, some quite cool stuff happening. But more on that later. So um, hopefully you can all see my screen, which has the title presentation Mobile 101 with rapid leverage. Um, so uh, can we can we see all that? Can we get some responses back from people to say that they can see the screen OK? Um, let's have a look. Can you see those coming in, Suresh? Be great to have some confirmation that. People yep, absolutely. See that okay uh, I, I can see on. people saying, "Yep, they can see. Uh, they can see the screen. I can see the screen as well." That's fine. awesome. Okay, so let's crack on. Excellent. Thanks, Suresh. So, um, let me tell you a bit about a little bit about me. Um, I'll show you a, a picture here. This is actually a picture that had me fascinated. Actually, at a very young age. I'm actually 41 years old now, but when I was at school, um, I was absolutely fascinated by this picture, which uh, has a massive area of purple on it. And um, I show you this to you because I think it's really important whenever you're doing something, you really follow your dream and follow something you're passionate about and following something that, that really kind of gets you fired up. And, and you'll find out as we go through this presentation, I'm very far uh, I, you, I actually had a chance to go out and follow that dream over 20 years ago now, and this is a picture I took of Mount Everest, uh, standing at 1,848 meters or 20,028 feet. Uh, amazing sight. And I actually was pretty crazy back then. I actually took a mountain bike out to the Himalayas uh, when really mountain bikes only just first came out. And uh, this is a picture of me up at 17 and a half thousand feet. Um, pretty insane. I was actually out in the Himalayas four months. Now I kind of showed you these slides because. Um, 
actually, when I look at what happened in the subsequent, I guess, 15 years of my career, I got I got stuck in a bit of a rut. And um, I'm sure many people can perhaps relate to this, where you you kind of stop following your dreams and actually you just find yourself just going through the motions. And I kind of did that for the best part of 15 years until um, 2008, when really the credit crunch started to hit, and you know, big stores like you know, almost institutions like Woolworths, you know, went bust. And alongside that, I was working with company, a FTSE 100 company at the time, a, an insurer. And you know, when you read these kind of headlines, city city breaks for jobs, bloodbath. It's not a good thing. And um, I found that two months after the Lehman Brothers collapse in December 2008, I actually got made redundant. Not a brilliant time to get made redundant, definitely uh, four years ago now, really. And the crazy thing is, for me, this is where Nathan started, because I was working at that time within, uh, you know, within the corporate world, and I decided that I didn't want to go and get another job. I kind of viewed that a job was actually um, probably the last thing I wanted to do as we were entering a recession. So I decided to actually set myself up as a consultant. And in 2009, I took the view that I sort of pushed the boundaries at every opportunity and challenged myself. So I show here a picture of the fourth plinth. Uh, this is in Chicago Square. And actually, 2009, they had a thing where for every hour of every day, for 100 days, a different person could stand on top of the fourth plinth and do whatever they liked. Um, so in my case, I thought it'd be quite cool to stand up there at three o'clock in the morning on a Saturday night dressed as Darth Vader. So um, <laughs> um, it was probably one of the most scariest moments of my life. But I think pushing the boundaries is a really important thing to do. And um, if you're starting something new, it's going to be scary when you first get into it. And and my whole mindset now is to continuously push the boundaries. So uh, a couple of years ago, I had a chance to go diving, and I, I show you this to you because. I would. I want people to create a lifestyle for themselves, which I'm sure Suraj has now. I certainly have created this kind of lifestyle for myself, where you can mix doing what you'd call work with doing really cool things. So I show this to you because at the same time I was out, uh, it was actually in the Pahenshan Islands in Malaysia. Um, we actually got stuck. We couldn't get back because of uh, the Icelandic volcano that happened in uh, where was it now? Easter 2009. Uh, no, we used to 2010. So we got stuck out there, and the great thing was I had my laptop, and I had internet connection, and I had clients that I could still carry on working with whilst I was out stuck in Malaysia. So I was out there for a week, and I was still able to earn money. I was still able to have a great time, and you know, and enjoy enjoy that lifestyle. Um, I have a family as well. This is my young son. He's a uh, Benedict. He's nine years old. And it's just really cool where you can do things like here. We, we flew to an air show that was near us. Would have been like a two-hour drive, uh, but actually it was like a 15-minute helicopter helicopter journey, which was quite cool. And also, uh, uh, when it comes to kind of work, it's really great to be able to mix all this up. So um, the last couple of summers with clients I've had in London, I've actually been able to stay on a boat in St. Catherine's Dock. And, and this kind of reduced for me what was previously a four-hour commute. And City and, and the great that I could get into the office at seven o'clock in the morning, seven thirty, seven thirty in the morning, and leave at four o'clock and, and have the, like the rest of the day with my family, uh, and that was just awesome. It was like living two days in one. And for me, it's also around having that freedom to be able to take time out. So uh, this year, I actually did a charity trek in the Sahara Desert, and this was a view that uh, a photo I took from uh, the top of one of the dunes that we uh, we ascended whilst we're out. And I had an amazing time. We actually raised seventy-seven thousand pounds for a local hospice where I live, and it is great to be able to take time out, knowing that you can do that, and and you're not kind of eating into your holiday allowance, and actually do great things for you know for other people. So that's kind of a bit about me. Um, I want to show you a bit about what I do. Um, this is kind of I guess for the last fifteen years, really how I somewhat I do. Um, and I kind of say I bridged the gap. I basically bridged the gap from business to probably every business people that understand the
So, hi, uh, I'm just going to interrupt you there for a second. Um, I think that your audio is cutting out quite a bit. Um, hi, Stuart, the audio is, is breaking up quite a lot. I can, I can hear it uh, sort of breaking up and bouncing around a fair bit. Uh, I think we've had a lot of messages from, from people saying that the audio is pretty bad. Are you still connected? Can you still hear me, Stuart? Okay, we, we can't make out. Stuart, if you can hear me, we, we can't make out anything you're saying, and there's a, a, a very, very bad echo and... Um, Sort of the, the the sound is bouncing around. It's not it's not making any sense. If you might you do you have another microphone that you can use or, or unplug whatever microphone you're using and, and talk into your computer that would probably fix the the issue, Stuart. If you can if you can hear me. Or in a worst case scenario, Stuart, if you can hear me, you can just dial in, uh, click on the telephone tab on the GoToWebinar panel and, and, and dial in via telephone. Um, I think Daryl's right, it's, it's about connection speed. Um, I'm not sure what, what speed you're running off, Stuart. Hopefully it's a, a secure broad or solid broadband rather than a, a mobile uh, broadband connection. I can see, uh, just for everyone else waiting, I can see Stuart is online. He hasn't been thrown off, uh, but I'm, I'm assuming his sound is just uh, just gone off for a moment. Uh, Stuart, when you're plugged back in and you can you can uh, get either another microphone or unplug your current microphone and use your computer audio, that would be great. Uh, as an alternative, as a last case scenario, just dial in on the um, on the dial in number. All you got to do is click on. Hi, right. Hi Stuart, you're back. I'm back. Hopefully you can hear me okay. I, I don't know why there's a problem. I've got a pretty good internet connection here, and um, there's no house using it at the moment either. So it is bouncing um, around a bit. I can hear you better now. It is bouncing around. Do you want to? Uh, do you think maybe dialing in would be a bit more safer for you in case it happens again? Do you know? Yeah, that? let me let me dial in from. If I come off of this line for a minute, then uh, that should be the best option. I think, shouldn't it? Yeah, maybe maybe uh, it might be the the connection as as Daryl's sort of pointed out in, in the messages. The safest thing and the quickest thing is probably just going to be for you to dial in on the on the phone number. Okay, uh, for everyone waiting, apologies for the delay and uh, the, the the technical issues. I can see Stuart's flicked over to the telephone audio and uh, it'll just take him a, a moment to dial in. Um, but for the time being, whilst we wait for Stuart, what would be good to know is just, just sort of where, where a few of you are coming from. So in the chat box, do you want to let me know whereabouts you're based and, and what your business is? And in the meantime, we can, uh, we can, we can wait for Stuart to, to, to log back in via the telephone connection. I can see there's a few people here, or most, mostly from the UK, a um, couple of people from up north. Yeah, mostly UK. Well, it's good to have a UK crowd, I think, uh, especially uh, at this time of the evening. Uh, it's good, good to see you guys, Sam, Daryl, uh, Adrian, Alan. Hi there. Quick. Can you hear me now? That's much better, Stuart. It's it's a it's a bit more uh, consistent now. So I'll hand it over back okay, to cool. you, and you can manage your slides and talk into the phone. Excellent. Thank you very much, and uh, <laughs> thanks for bearing with me on this. That's all right. The one of the technology, hey. Yeah. So, right. So that's kind of what I do. I bridge the gap between business and IT. So let's take you into really what you're going to learn today in this session. So uh, bring up the next slide. 
So I'm going to take you through three steps to creating a successful mobile consulting business. I'm also going to take you through three fundamental principles for identifying money clients, so you can actually find clients who, or target clients who are more likely to give you a better return on your time and investment. I'm also going to show you why you need to create a mobile funnel to maximize those opportunities, and it's a mobile specific funnel, so whilst you'll recognize some of the components of it, there are also some there that are specific to mobile. And then a single strategy that can earn you three times more than email marketing. You'll often see uh, people quote that you make kind of roughly a dollar a month through email marketing. And I'll show you a way using uh, SMS which can make three times that. Also, I'll show you three ways to build a, build a six-figure mobile consulting business, three different business models, and take you through so our seven steps to implementing a mobile messaging campaign. So I'll take you through at a more granular level how you can actually implement that campaign um, with those individual components. And then towards the end, I'll give you the number one golden rule that we use when it comes to building a mobile list, uh, because mobile does have some differences, and if you recognize this rule, you actually save yourself a lot of, a lot of time and, and, and effort uh, that you don't otherwise waste in that process. And then finally, um, I've got an unannounced bonus strategy, which I'll share with you, which um, I thought would be really useful to throw into. So, um, right, let's take you on through through this then. So, when you're looking at when you're looking at mobile, it's really important to bear in mind that there's like seven billion people on the planet. So, there's 5.9 billion mobile users worldwide. It's something like four times the number of mobile users as there are PC and laptop users. So, you're talking about a much much bigger market that you can tap into here. And this is from research carried out earlier this year. Second thing is around why use mobile. So, you know, mobile really kind of sits now at the center of things, and it's really been brought about because of the advances through smartphone technology and through smartphones themselves. And the thing to bear in mind is here, it sits at the center of all these other channels. So you've got things like print, you know, printed um, material, uh, as one of the other uh, channels uh, that, that sits out there. You then got radio. Um, but that ties in also with things like podcasts and that kind of thing. You've then got television. Um, you know, TVs now are increasingly uh, mobile, uh, sorry, internet, internet ready. Um, and also, the, something like 84% of people um, watching TV are actually sitting there with their mobile phone in front of them, when they're either surfing or they're, you know, texting friends or emailing people whilst they're watching the TV. Um, you know, typically, particularly people will turn off, a, you know, uh, ignore the adverts on the TV, and, and just 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 be on their mobile whilst while stuff like that's happening. Um, the next one is around the internet. Obviously, mobile integrates really well with that. When you're looking at smartphone technology, the fact you can access mobile sites and email and all this other stuff and, and mobile apps uh, directly through the internet. And there is 4G now coming into the UK. Um, and I know it's been piloted right now, and next year, I think end of Q1, uh, that's going to go across you know, across most of the UK. Uh, that's going to bring like broadband speeds to a phone. So you know, it's going to make a huge difference to the, the people's consumption of videos and all this kind of stuff. Then you have uh, cinema. Uh, you know, mobile integrates with that, and you know, if you have apps like Flixster on your phone, where you can view movie trailers and and all this sort of stuff. It, you know, it, it, it's another example of the way in which um, cinema goers are being engaged through mobile to actually encourage them to actually go to the cinema, uh, watch films. If you go to Blockbusters, you'll see that they run their own SMS campaigns where they'll send out a couple of times a month um, promotional offers to come and to go and rent videos and DVDs and stuff like that. So you know, all this is happening right now. And then the final one is around recordings. So you know, this can be MP3s, MP4s, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, people now have massive music collections on their on their on their phones or on their on their on their iPod, uh, but increasingly on their on their smartphones. So mobile integrates with all these channels, and it's just just recognising that simple fact um, makes you realise just how powerful mobile is and how how powerful it will become. Some other important things while around why text messaging. It comes down to the text message open rate. Um, Frost and Sullivan did a whole read of research which showed that over 98% of text messages get opened and read, compared to 22% of emails. Uh, and the likelihood is, I think, if you look at 
you know, you speak to most email marketers, that number is actually way lower than 22%. It could even be less than 10% or, you know, down as low as 5 to 6%. So there's a big difference between the two there. And I think the figures I've seen will show that more than 95% of text messages actually get open within, within less than five minutes. It's also around the coupon response rate. So um, the redemption rate of mobile coupons is actually 10 times that of traditional coupons. So by traditional coupons, it's like the paper, you know, printed coupons you might see in newspapers or um, you might have like um, sort of wallets of them. Uh, and typically people, you know, look at those and think, oh, that's great. And then they never actually get around to actually using it. Whereas with mobile, um, you know, it's sitting there maybe as a text message, you know, on your phone. It's very, very easy to use. You can be walking past the store go, oh, yeah, I remember I had one from them last week. And you know you're going to use it straight away. So. Let's take you into the three steps of creating a successful mobile consulting business. So the first one here is around identifying your target market. I'm going to take you into more detail in this in a minute, but very, very important to identify the target market because there are certain target markets you just don't want to really go into where it's much harder to monetize and there isn't necessarily the kind of cash in that particular market area to warrant the kind of investment of, of implementing a mobile strategy. So I'll take you through the detail of that in a minute. Second one is around creating this mobile funnel. Really important so you can create multiple um, entry points for a business to actually engage with you know, your offering and your products and services. And then finally is around having the right mobile strategies. So you've actually got very specific strategies you can implement once people are then coming into that funnel. Uh, and each of these points here I'm going to expand upon through this presentation. So let's crack on with that. So, Let's take you through three fundamental principles for identifying money clients. So the first one I'll take you through is what's called the client cash quadrant. And we've developed this ourselves. Because people have often come to me and said, you know, Stuart, what sort of market can I go into? You know, what, give me one that I know I can definitely make money in. And I kind of look at it and think, well, actually, let's turn that around the other way. And rather than kind of just say, look, just go and Go to you know, just go into restaurants or just go into hotels or whatever it might be. I'd rather teach the principles so you know what kind of uh, criteria you need to be looking for because you may have other markets that you know that aren't on the list, that aren't on the hot list that people might refer to, that uh, are equally profitable and actually maybe more profitable because you might know that really well and other people may not be in it. There may be this competition. So I'll teach you the principles here. This is what the client cash quadrant is all about. If you imagine that you looked at a particular client or a particular customer, um, so, when you take, so when you take a particular client, you're going to look at the customer and you look at what value um, that customer is to that particular client or that particular business. And then you look at another fact, which is time, as in, as in over what period of time does that, uh, does that customer provide value back into that business. So when you look at it, you've got scenarios here where you've got a high customer value, and then you've also got scenarios here where you've got uh, customer value over a long period of time. And obviously you've then got you know, the individual quadrants within this, within this model. So let's take you through individually each one here. Um, bottom left hand corner, you might be looking at businesses like locksmiths, aerial fitting companies, you know, maybe even MO testing, MOT testing companies, where the value is actually pretty low and it might be a one-time purchase. You know, you're going to maybe lose your keys once, or you maybe want to upgrade your aerial once um, to you know digital aerial or something. So you're not going to be going back year on year to spend money there. Um, MOT testing is maybe a bit more marginal because you do obviously need to get your MOT done every year, but you don't necessarily necessarily need to show loyalty to whoever does your test. You, you know, it's, it's a fairly commodity-based thing. So that that's probably more to the kind of uh, the right-hand side of that particular uh, quadrant. If we move on into it though, you can see some of the differences here. So next one is where the value is relatively low, but the, but the time aspect is over a long period of time. And then you'll keep going back. You're going to keep spending money with this business or these types of businesses. So this might be restaurants, bars, hairdressers, as, as an example. You're not looking at very high value. Third one, and this is a really great one, is where you're in the top right hand corner and you've got high value, a high value customer and you like to be back spending money with that business um, you know, again and again, year after year. 
So here, kind of golf courses, accountants, vets might be typical examples you'd look at in the top right-hand corner. Uh, and certainly these kind of clients, uh, and also ones in the right-hand side with you know, restaurants, bars, and, and hairdressers, those kind of businesses are all really good businesses to look at from a mobile perspective, uh, particularly with SMS, because SMS is around building long-term value for a business. It's around building a list for the business, uh, so they've got a list of customers that they can engage with time and time again. So um, the right-hand side is absolutely where you want to be focusing your efforts. If you're looking top left, though, that doesn't mean there's not opportunities there. So top left is where you've got high customer value, but maybe kind of a one-time per purchase. You know, so people might pay to uh, upgrade their double glaze into their house, or they might move home and, and or have an incident in their life where they need a solicitor. Um, and, uh, or maybe they need kids as well, or they'd like to have kids. Um, so things like that, high value, um, but not necessarily more than you know, one-time purchase. And the reason why I show this is if you think about double glazing companies, and I've spoken to uh, a few where they actually say they spend a significant amount actually advertising. So um, the figure I had quoted was like six, seven hundred pounds a double glazing company will um, spend to acquire one customer. So here the strategy can be more around lead generation rather than that ongoing relationship building. Um, and certainly you can use uh, SMS for lead generation. So that's a different set of strategies you might implement, but absolutely uh, there's, there's, there's opportunities in that, in that top left-hand quadrant. So that's kind of it really when you look at the client cash quadrant, and it really comes down to what businesses are you targeting, what businesses are you working with, and thinking about it in the context of these principles here. So the next fundamental principle I want to take you through here, I've called the capacity closer. And this one's really important because many people think well, if you're offering deals and you're offering discounts and coupons and stuff like that through any kind of method, that it's always around you know, reducing the price and selling it at a loss and stuff like that. And I fundamentally say that's, that's, that's a kind of flawed approach because yes, you can do that, um, but actually there's strategies you can implement where you discount but you discount in order to fill your excess capacity. So if you've got particular days of the week, times of the month, um, hours of the day, when you when a business knows they have spare capacity, you can use SMS to actually, uh, as a very targeted way, to, to close that gap and, and, and increase your uh, overall throughput. So I should kind of show you how that works. So if you imagine you've got demand, and I'll take you back to kind of school here with um, maybe graphs you've done when you're at school around uh, demand and supply. So if you imagine you've got demand on one axis and you've got time on the other. And if you think of most businesses, take like a restaurant, uh, a restaurant is going to have pretty fixed supply. They've only got so many tables, they've only got so much space, they've only got so much, um, so many staff, so many chefs, so much food. So their supply is fairly, fairly uh, consistent over time. So uh, their ability to actually increase that significantly is a bit challenged, really. And then you've got demand, and demand can fluctuate significantly during the course of, uh, of a week or of course, the course of a month or over the course of a year. And you think right now, lots of restaurants, bars are going to be very, very busy during December, but come January, most of them are going to be dead. And, and the same is true of a lot of industries, uh, and they're all going to work on a, on a cyclical basis, and it's just going to, you know, it's, it's going to be time that's going to vary. So down here on, on the, um, the x-axis, you you know, that day, week, month, or year um, is really the thing you need to think about. So what happens is, whenever you've got this imbalance between supply and demand, is you've got an opportunity. You've got an opportunity to help close that gap on behalf of the business. And if you're building a list for a business, a mobile list of, um, of mobile numbers, of mobile subscribers, then you can engage with those subscribers to help fill that gap and to, and to, and to um, bring in additional revenue during that time. And the way I look at it is, if you've got a business that has an imbalance there like this, They've got, they've got fixed costs, they've got overheads, they've got you know, assets that are basically sitting there doing nothing. And if you can bring an additional revenue that actually uh, brings in the additional money to, to the business when they would otherwise have just spent money on, on, their, on their overheads, if you bring an additional revenue, revenue during that time, then you're directly in, in impacting on their profitability, and directly improving their profitability. So, the impact can be quite significant, that's what I'm saying, and, and, and if you sell it to a business on that basis, they, they'll see the benefit of it. So this one is around, as I said, is all around reducing the business's fixed costs. And the third one, this one's quite quick, but it's just a, one you mustn't forget, which is around customer demographics. 
So I mentioned, for instance, uh, hairdressing. I just wanted to show to you that not all businesses are the same. You need to be very mindful of demographics because you know, there are certain demographics, if you're looking at kind of a younger age group, sort of, you know, sort of teenage years up to 20 something, 30 something, they're all you know, very highly tuned into mobile and, and how it all works and, and, and this whole thing. Whereas an, an older age group you know, doesn't necessarily have that same attitude and that, and that same approach. So this is the example I give you. you know, not all businesses are the same. Uh, and clear for these two types of businesses, same type of business, um, you know, the lady on the right is going to be a lot more receptive to uh, mobile, mobile marketing, mobile messaging than, than the lady on the left who's you know, looking at a crossword puzzle or whatever. So that's an important thing to remember. So let's take you through, the next thing to learn here is I want to, I want to take you through the mobile funnel and show you how you can implement that to maximize uh, on opportunities. And, and this is all around, as I said, creating multiple touch points um, into your business. So one principle that I like to um, have in mind when I look at a mobile funnel is the quote from Warren Buffett. And he said, you know, I don't look to jump over seven foot bars, I look around for one foot bars that I can step over. And I guess that also epitomizes why you want the funnel, because you want to make it very easy for businesses to, to, uh, to to actually engage with your services and, and, and create the right, you know, a nice low entry point where businesses are perhaps reticent to come in at a, at a higher level. It doesn't mean if say businesses won't, um, it all depends on what relationship you have with them and what their needs are and how well you sell it to them. Uh, but it's around creating that environment that maximizes those opportunities. So let's take you through the funnel itself. Um, the first aspect of the funnel is around you know, creating free content. And I'm sure you know, some of the stuff I'm sharing here, you know, you're already maybe doing this in your, in your business already, and you're on your online business. Um, you may already be doing it for clients in a minute. So I'm not going to uh, teach you to suck eggs, but I'm going to take you through how this sits in a mobile context. Second one is around creating a free report, in this case a free mobile report, so you can actually educate people on mobile. Next one down is around creating a free text demo, and this is what Siraj referred to at the start of this, uh, the start of this webinar. Um, and I'll take you through that as well in a minute. All of these I'll take you through in more detail in a moment. So level four is around implementing a 30-day trial or a, or a trial period. So this is around giving people the opportunity, giving business the opportunity to kind of experience the service that you can provide through mobile firsthand without necessarily um, committing fully. And it allows them to just understand the kind of mechanics around how it all works without, without you know, any kind of real expenditure. Down from that is a strategy which we call daily deals. Uh, and daily deals is a bit like kind of pay as you go on a mobile phone, insofar as um, a business is really just uh, taking advantage of a list that you will build that you're leveraging within uh, a local market. So the business doesn't own that list, you own that list, you're, you know, you've, you've built that list, um, and you can then run daily deals through that list with different businesses. Now from that, you've got dedicated SMS. So this is, in contrast to daily deals, this is where you're actually building a list for a business. So it's their customers, and it's kind of ring-fenced to their business, and therefore, whenever you're engaging with that list, it's only about stuff for that particular business. Whereas daily deals could be about any number of, you know, it could be for any number of different businesses or organizations. And the final one is around full service. So this is just recognizing that actually, if you only focus on mobile, or you only focus on mobile messaging, you're kind of leaving a lot of money on the table because there's going to be other opportunities that you could find presented to you that you can still earn good money from. Um, and, and actually, that money may be even better than the money you'd earn through mobile messaging. So uh, you want to always be alive to the fact that, that if you're offering the full service, even if you're outsourcing stuff, um, then you become that kind of one-stop shop as, as far as the business, business is concerned for their, their marketing, their digital marketing services. So let's go into a bit more detail with this. So first one around free content. I'm just going to take you through some of the principles here. So it's all around moving that free line. I think this was a quote I heard from Mark Anastasi around moving this free line to, to give away more free stuff. And it's around educating potential prospects, which for mobile I think is really important because it's so new. People, people have a lot of misconceptions around how it works and what it costs and privacy concerns and all that sort of stuff. So you want to do that so you can help build trust and confidence in people's minds. And then it's around here um, creating different mediums. You know, so 
podcasts or webinars, videos, uh, you know, to a camera or, or stuff people can read, you know, whether it be articles or blog posts. So uh, I mentioned kind of AVK there, so audio, visual, and kinesthetic. Uh, if you're interacting with people in different ways, then you know you can press some people's buttons some of the time and, and other people's in, in a different way. So example here is um, we've created our own YouTube channel where we're increasingly adding content, just free content that people can go to to consume stuff. Um, so that's uh, YouTube forward slash Moshi Moby, um, and that's you know that's my company name, Moshi Moby. So uh, we created that channel there. You know, feel free to visit it, and you'll find you know lots of uh, content there that we're adding, and more that we'll be adding all the time. Um, you know, and it says there's no obligation then if people are going to that uh, channel to you know to do any more other than just uh, watch some of the videos. Cool. So the second one is around the free mobile report, and I differentiate this because yes, you're providing that free report, uh, but it's actually provided in return for um, information. So say like an email address, so this would be the, you know, the, the usual kind of opt-in. So, uh, so it, it doesn't really sit completely free, so to speak, because you are giving something back in return. Obviously within the report you can also have uh, calls to action, and also you can promote other services. So for instance, promoting a free demo, a first day trial, daily deals, or dedicated campaigns. Any of those kind of things can be promoted within that report, or whatever other services you provide. Um, so example here is this is a free report we've created, and this takes uh, you through how you can implement a mobile strategy and the types of strategies you can implement, and particularly around how you can implement these seven steps to successful mobile messaging. So we have on our homepage um, that report where you can download it, and uh, you know, it's about 30 odd pages, and you've got our contact details on there as well there if you're wanting to follow up with us more. So that just shows you another example around how that works. So this is where now it gets where it gets really interesting because now we're into the realms of mobile and mobile text messaging. And what I've actually done here is set set up a demo that that will work both uh, if you're live on the call now, but also if you're listening to this uh, as a recording. I'll leave this uh, leave this up and running so that at any point uh, from now and in the future you can be um, just seeing how this works and experiencing this demo, which just gives you a really good way. Uh, to kind of experience it and, uh, and, and a feeling for, for the mechanics. So here it's around uh, inviting people to try something for free. Um, there is a cost here, it's simply your standard network rate. So um, so if you are on a pay as you go, it's going to be a few pence, but for most people you've got a pretty generous allowance um, within your own text plan or even unlimited text. Most people have a lot these days, so um, it's, free. it's pretty much free. And the way it works is you text in a keyword and then you can get a reply back. So a keyword um, in this case is the word rapid, which you could text to 64414 and uh, you'll get a reply back. And I'll show you a bit more how this works. So what we'll do is when you do this is uh, it will actually reply back with a question. It will also give you uh, a download link to the report I referred to earlier, the free report, and it will actually give you the opportunity to engage with me more when you try this out. Just give, just give it a go. Um, I'll explain to you a bit more how it works in a second. Um, what this is about, when you, when you do this, it's really a great selling opportunity. So I've done this at an event where I've given people the opportunity to meet me at an event, and it's like a, like a conference. And uh, a lot of conferences have like an, a, a, a JV table or a networking table where you can put your details. So I put my details down there and actually been able to directly connect with people at that event where they've texted in and um, been captured within my text database, but also um, received details back from me that that's, you know, allowed us to meet at the event. And I've actually done business that way. Um, a few months ago, I met someone at an event like that where uh, conservatively that client would be worth about 10,000 pounds to me over the next 12 months. Uh, and, and they initiated the contact with me purely through using this, this kind of mechanics. So there's a couple of ways you can use it. Um, you can use it where you can reply back with questions or a video. You could easily do like a, a YouTube link, um, which so they can watch the video live on their phone, on their smartphone. Um, uh, or you can personalize it. So you can actually create personalized um, uh, methods of connecting with people. So for instance, if I show you the one I've done here today, um, so I've set this up where you can text rapid to 64414. And uh, I'll only use that word rapid 
for this webinar. So it just allows me to understand people that have watched this webinar, people that uh, have got value out of uh, what I've been doing uh, on this call today. And if you do text in there, you can basically get the opportunity to have a free 20-minute uh, consultation with me around mobile. Um, it only applies to UK. And as I said, text is star charge at standard network rate. Um, I'll never actually contact you after this without your permission. So I'm just using this as a method for you to connect with me now rather than me to you know, spam you with loads of text down the road. I'm not interested in doing that. I kind of take the view that um, you, you can be a lot smarter with how you use this technology. Um, and so if you want to have a 20 minute consultation with me, text in the word rapid to 64414 and I'll send you through a whole lot of free stuff and, um, and give you a chance to, uh, to, to have, have, some, have some of my time. There's no restriction on that as far as anybody can do that. I'm not going to be just choosing like one or two people to connect with. If you want to connect with me, then that's all you need to do. Cool. So hopefully that shows you how the free text demo works. Let's take you through to the next one, which is around the 30-day trial. And this is a very low-risk way for a business to get started with SMS. I just want to take you through the kind of the base of the offer that we provide. So this gives them access to the system for 30 days, where we'll be running an offer for them. And we'll do that using a branded keyword in their company name. So it means they're promoting their business using a word that is generally their name or, or you know, closely associated with their name. There are some restrictions around that in terms of the number of characters you can use, but it's, it's, it, it's, uh, it, you're not giving them a code to text in, they're actually using, you know, it, it, is, it is their name. And then you run a, we'll run a promotional offer for them for, um, for those 30 days, which will allow us to build a list and we'll give them a message allowance as well. Uh, within that uh, in that 30 day period. And this way a business can get involved, um, can get up and running very, very quickly, very, very easily with, with you know, minimal cost. And it's a great opportunity as well to start building a, a wider list, uh, which uh, I probably don't have time to go into now, but it's, it's, a, it's a great way to do that. The mechanics of this is quite simple. Um, you might have someone in a store and they'd say, you know, this, the, the salesperson might say, you know, would you like to receive 20% off your next order valid until the end of the month? And so they're going to make the offer and this person goes, oh, yeah, great. So I just need to text the word, in this case, I'm just saying rapid to 64414. Um, and what that would do is instead of, uh, at least in this context, it would send back a, an offer or, or a coupon to, directly to the person's phone with that 20% off and the, and the expiry date of it. And they will just simply show that back into the business within the, yeah, that period, and they've got that offer. If they wanted to, they could share it to their friends. That wouldn't be a problem either, um, because it's all going to you know, be good from a business's point of view in terms of bringing additional revenue back in. So the 30-day trial, it's important to bear in mind, actually, through this process, is that text marketing is permission-based. So you can't just go and buy a list of numbers um, or chore through a database that you may have acquired uh, that has numbers in it, and 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 use that from 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 the word go. Um, people need to know if you if you have uh, obtained their number, they need to know that you're going to be there messaging them later, um, and that that's the opted in for that specific purpose. So the regulations are tighter than say email marketing, and um, particularly if you look in the US, you'll see uh, all sorts of lawsuits and things happening there quite regularly. Um, being the US way around you know, companies sending out uh, unsolicited text messages. So it's important that you always um, allow people to opt in and you really only message people where they have opted in and you always give people the, the opportunity to opt out. So for instance, if I was going to be sending you messages after today, if you've, if you've texted in rapid, I will give you a, uh, a keyword within the text that you could reply back with so that you could actually choose to stop receiving any further text. And, and if you've got a good system to work with, that should then handle that automatically. Okay, next on this um, is around the daily deals. So this is around uh, creating something that actually can spin off from the 30-day trial. So for instance, if you imagine you get to the, 30, the end of the 30-day trial, a business may not want to continue with um, setting up a dedicated campaign, but they might be quite happy to, you know, to, to leverage the list you've already built and actually uh, do some daily deals, offer some, some more uh, offers out to a bigger list. So it can spin off from that quite easily. 
And what you'll be doing is building a list within a targeted group. So generally a targeted group might be a, geographically, so it might be within, within like a city centre, um, or it might be centred around maybe a university or a hospital, any kind of large gathering of people um, that you can target um, you know, would, would work for a day deal. And what you would do is you're basically getting paid to send out offers and coupons to that list. So you're working with businesses that um, would want to offer deals out to that targeted group and they're paying you for uh, every message that gets sent out according to the size of that database. And the key thing is to take a community approach. It's create a win-win. So with the daily deals we're running, um, one of the things I do is I offer a discount if a business is a new business. So if they've only established themselves in the last 12 months, we actually give them preferential rates. And actually, if they're a community group, let's say a group that organizes fundraisers, we'll actually promote, um, promote that fundraising event to the list effectively for free. We'll, we'll do it at cost. Um, so that's really important because when it comes to building the list, people are much more receptive if they know that not only will they gain, but actually it's helping the wider community. And it does also open up some quite cool ways in which you can build that list as well. Um, important also to integrate that with other channels. So obvious ones are like social media because you want to be able to get the word out. So things like Facebook and Twitter um, just makes a lot of sense to, to integrate uh, what you're doing with, you know, with messaging with, with, say, Facebook because you can put images on it and, and you can get that kind of viral juice that is so easy to generate through, through uh, social media that, um, that you know, it's, it's completely free. So you know, why not take advantage of it? And then the other thing about daily deals, it gives you this chance to, to upsell into dedicated campaigns. So if a business is seeing that there's responsiveness through offering those deals, because they know that ultimately they don't own that customer database, um, uh, you know, it becomes more compelling for a business to say, okay, you know, what can I do when I do own that customer database? And, and that opens up you know, opportunities around engaging with their customers. There's more than just offering deals and offers and things like that. They can be doing other things. So I'll show you a bit more what that looks like in a minute. So daily deals you know, simply could be you know, people asking people to text in like the word save to 64414, and then it, 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 that allows them to kind of opt into the, uh, into the program. That's just giving you an example there. So next up, I look at dedicated campaigns. So this is where you might be offering coupons and special offers. That's still a mainstay of what you're doing. But of course, there'll be other things like surveys, quizzes, competitions. And you can actually make, make the SMS platforms work in quite an interactive way where it's a bit like you see on, um, it's a bit like you see the competitions, which are generally like premium services on television with like X Factor and stuff like that, where they will ask people to text in, you know, the uh, you know A, B, or C for um, normally a completely daft question, which is obvious to know the answer on, um, and they'll bill for that at a premium rate. You can do the same thing, but not actually at a premium rate, just where you're actually having the business engage with their customers around, you know, it might be what menu they prefer if it's a restaurant, or it might be on the quality of the service and whether they'd come back and use the, their business again. It can be those kind of things. Um, that's also quite cool as well because you can integrate that with reputation management. So reputation management is quite big at the moment where people are wanting to actively manage their online uh, presence. And if people, if a business knows which of their customers like their service, then you can actually do quite cool things with that segmented list where you can actually um, encourage the people that really love your service to improve your online presence. Uh, and obviously, if people don't like your service, you can you know you can um, try and meet those people's needs other ways as well, which might be just to understand where you went wrong. So there's some really cool things you can do there where you've got uh, targeted response coming back from people. Other things around engagement, brand awareness, um, product launches and promotions. And if you imagine you've got a list and you're investing a significant amount of money in, to create a new product, and you're going to launch that, then knowing that you've got a really targeted database of customers can actually you know, make a big difference to whether that launch is successful or not. And the final thing is here around uh, creating a loyalty scheme or a VIP club. This is where you can target the other end of the spectrum to the customers that just want deals and offers. You're actually targeting the customers here that love your service and will happily pay more to have a better experience. So you can use text messaging for that as well, which is uh, quite a powerful uh, way of looking at things. 
So this is giving you a couple of examples here of, of specific offers you might do or specific uh, calls to action. Um, so you know, dry cleaners and uh, wine merchants. So next on with a full service. So this is really important because it's around being in, uh, capable of providing a wider range of services. So just some examples here it might be social media management, it might be website or mobile development, mobile site development, it might be app development, it could be things like email, video, webinar marketing, um, paid advertising, whether it be sort of Google, PPC, Facebook, or media buying, um, which is quite big at the moment. Um, and then things like SEO services, article marketing, all that kind of stuff. So any of these services um, sit nicely alongside alongside uh, mobile marketing, mobile messaging. So I'll give you an example. I uh, had a client that I went to a few months ago, and I looked at their overall kind of marketing funnel, and one of the things it was kind of crying out for was um, to implement a webinar, because they have uh, quite a high-end product. It's like sort of two, three thousand pounds, and they were kind of expecting people to make quite a big leap to buy into that service without giving people perhaps a taster of what they actually get through that, which a webinar would deliver really well. So you know, we've imp we implemented a, a webinar with them there, and uh, I haven't even got to talking to them yet really properly around SMS and what we're doing on that side of things. And uh, we've done that on a revenue split as well. So from my point of view, um, I'm investing that time up front in order to then be able to get a return on that later. Um, so you don't want to ignore those opportunities because those opportunities can actually be bigger for some clients than the text message marketing. Funny enough though, it was the text message marketing that was the in originally with our business. So uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's about being able to provide that full range of services. So when you look at that, it just sits visually um, in this form where you're actually able to offer that breadth of services that integrates SMS um, with other other channels and other other forms of digital marketing. So um, let's take you through this single strategy to um, three times more than email marketing. So what I'm going to do here is, is when you look at this, is that people will often quote and say that you can typically earn one dollars a month per subscriber uh, on your on your um, you know, in your autoresponder, and I want to show you um, just some of the numbers that actually sits with daily deals uh, that that shows how you can earn three times more that per subscriber. So let's just take you through the numbers. So if you're charging on daily deals, you, know, you can be charging around 15 pence per text um, per subscriber. So you know, if you've got a thousand people on a list, you're then going to be charging 150 pounds. Uh, to send out a blast to those thousand people. So if you imagine you're sending out five offers a week, um, so you're not doing like you know seven days a week, you're doing five five days over the course of the week, and you're doing an average of four weeks a month. So it means you're kind of sending out 20 offers uh, a month. And if you assume the cost to actually send the text message is five pence, it means your gross profit per text is then 10 pence per text that's going out. So you can then look at the numbers. You've then got five offers a week times four weeks in the month times your 10 pence, it's basically equal to two pounds, um, or in today's money in dollars, you've got three dollars um, per subscriber per month. So I show you this because you know, people say you know, the money is in the list, and it, it's absolutely the case, and it's the same principles here with mobile, mobile marketing, mobile messaging. Um, but because mobile has a higher response rate, because you're creating a kind of highly targeted list, because you know the deliverability rate is you know 95% or more, um, you're able to monetize that more effectively, which means you don't need as big a list to actually be able to make uh, the same amount of money. So hopefully, just looking at these numbers kind of gives some really good context around how you can actually implement mobile mobile messaging. So let's carry on through here. Um, this this next slide here, in terms of these next couple more points, are, are pretty quick. So uh, I'll run through these individually. So three ways to build a uh, six-figure mobile consulting business. Um, what I want to do is take you back to the mobile funnel because essentially daily deals, dedicated SMS, and the full service agency, each of those business models individually 
could be a six-figure consulting business for you, even if, if you just focused on one of those. Um, you know, forgetting whether you want them to implement all three, which I would advise too, um, but actually each, each of those individually can, can easily be a six-figure consulting business. So what I want to do is just show you this in the context of daily deals. So we've shown a minute ago how your gross profit per text is you know, 10 pence. And if you're sending out five, uh, you know, five texts a week um, and four, four times a month, uh, 20 texts a month, uh, so you've got 10 pence times 20 is two pounds per subscriber. So that was the number we got to a minute ago. And so if you're building a database, a mobile database of 4,000 people, you're then able to earn through that 4,000 times two, so it's 8,000 pounds a month. So over the course of a year, you're talking about 96,000 pounds a year uh, in terms of uh, overall revenue after you've deducted your costs for actual sending the messages out. So let's give you one example. Um, the same kind of principle applies when you look at dedicated campaigns and when you're looking at uh, you know, the full service, but obviously the, the scenarios that are applying are much more varied. But hopefully that gives you a good, good idea as to what is possible here. Next up, I'm going to take you through quickly the seven steps to implementing a successful mobile messaging campaign. And I'm going to take you through this quite quickly because I'm kind of conscious of time, but there's also a video you can see within um, our YouTube channel, and it's like a 15 minute video where I'm going to take you through in much more detail each step here. So, um, so the fact I'm going through this quickly now doesn't really matter because you can go to, you can go to YouTube and, and watch it later. But let's just take you through the principles. So these seven steps has mobile in the middle. So step one, and they all begin by the way with the letter S. So step one is, is that somebody has to see a promotional offer. They have to see an opportunity to text into a campaign. So I've given you the opportunity today just to text in the word rapid to 64414 and you know stuff will happen on the back of that. Um, like I said, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna implement um, or message you loads because you've texted in. So I'm not gonna follow this exact formula I'm showing you here. But the, the context behind what I'm showing you here is around a business that's say a retail business or a business that has a product to sell where they want to be uh, doing offers out to those out to their customers. So that customer's first gonna see that campaign and then they're gonna send a text message. And once they send that text message, they then become a subscriber into, um, into the, the, you know, the back-end database that stores all those numbers. That all needs to be securely stored. It needs to be ring-fenced around that particular client or that particular type of campaign. Um, and it, they, yeah, there needs to be strict controls around that. Um, I'm registered, for instance, with the information commissioners, the information, the, the ICO, Information Commissioner's Office. So um, there are strict rules around how you handle that data. Next is step four is straight away you want to you want to have a message that goes back to the person when they send that text in. Uh, so so knows they know know they know it works and it gives you a great opportunity to follow up with um, you know with more than what I'm saying here, which is thanks for subscribing, but um, it gives you a chance to follow up in other ways. So if you are texting in the word rapid six four four one four, you get a link to uh, the Download a download report which you can just view on your phone as a PDF, and you know and other stuff happens too. So uh, that goes back straight away. Then after that, you can then be looking at making special offers to those people. So if you're in a retail environment, you know you can be asking people to text in say the word deal to you know to get 20% off, um, and so you can be texting out those special offers. When people see those, they can then select which ones they want to. You know, to, to, to go with, so they can show that deal uh, into the business to, in order to uh, take advantage of that offer. But they can also share it as well. So they can forward that onto their friends, and their friends can then take advantage of that offer too. So they, they can be like a viral component to uh, that particular offer. Now, at this point in, point in time, if the stuff is shared, it doesn't go back into the subscriber database, it doesn't go back to step three. But if somebody has taken advantage of that offer and they like that offer and they see the value in that offer, at some point they, it's only a matter of time before they see you know, that promotional campaign and they then text in at you know, step, step two and, and that person then becomes you know, a regular subscriber on that database. So the fact they can share is a really good thing. And finally, you want uh, both the customer to be satisfied that they've actually you know, had a great experience through, through taking advantage of that offer 
And you also want the business to be satisfied as that they've actually secured more business through it. So there needs to be that win-win that comes through that whole that whole equation. Um, so that's kind of it in terms of the seven steps to mobile messaging. As I said, if you go to the YouTube channel, our channel is Moshi Mobi, um, then you can uh, you know you can watch a 15-minute video that takes you through this on a flip chart where I'm actually talking to camera and I'm going into a lot more detail around how how you can implement this strategy and how it all works. Okay. Um, Here we are. So I want to share with you this number one rule around how you build your mobile list. Because there are differences with mobile that absolutely you need to take on board when it comes to um, implementing any kind of strategy. I'm sure you know, you, you're aware of these yourself when you think about um, the personal nature of a mobile device and the fact that you always have it with you and you know your number you may have had for the last 10, 20 years, um, you know, and, and and therefore, you know, you actually view that number with with a degree of um, you know, there's a degree of protection around that number that you'll you'd want to uh, exert, different to the way you would with an email. And um, in fact, you only have to look at the way people use emails when they opt into things, you know, where they'll have a different email address these days to opt into a, a list. Versus the one they use with their, you know, with their friends or business. Um, I know people even go to extremes where they'll have like a temporary email that you know, expires after 30 minutes. So it's clearly different, a different scenario if you're asking someone to opt in using their mobile number. I think what this comes down to, really, is just one word: is the word trust. So when you're building a list, you need to be um, going about it in such a way where people will trust you with that bit of information, where they know that, that you can hold that information securely, where they know that you know, you know you're not going to sell that information to other people, where they, where they know that you're not going to spam them and send them you know, constant messages at all times of day. Um, you know, fundamentally, there are very strict rules around how you should be handling that data, and you need to make it very clear when someone texts in what you're going to do with it. So like I said, if you text in the word rapid to 64414, um, you know, you might get a ha handful of texts from me over the next few months, tops, because I'm really using this as an opportunity for you to experience how you can use text messaging rather than an opportunity to um, capture leads, so to speak, because I take the view that actually, if you like what I'm doing, you'll find other ways to connect with me, uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. The other thing I say here about trust is, if you're looking to build a list, it's really good to partner with someone that already has an established relationship with their customers. So if you're partnering with a business and they already have um, a customer database, maybe of email, uh, email addresses, well then that will be a really good starting point to start building a mobile list. Um, equally, if you're building a list for things like daily deals, then um, if you're doing kind of joint ventures with people that have uh, groups that, that you want to focus and target on, if if those groups already have an established relationship with the organization that you're doing a joint venture with, then that trust already exists. And when that trust already exists, it makes it a lot, lot easier to build that list because those barriers are almost overcome already. So just that one word is a really important one to take home when you're doing mobile list building because you just save a whole lot of hassle and aggravation later and frustration trying to build a list where people perhaps aren't even receptive to um, to, you know, to to sharing their their important information like a mobile number. I think too as well is attitudes will change when people start to realise too um, what happens when you share that information and around how actually it's all around creating a better user experience and around um, providing the people with timely and relevant information that is going to help their everyday lives. If that is your focus in terms of how you're using that information and how you're sharing um, you know, information with people, then that helps them build that trust over time and people become a lot more comfortable with engaging with it. So um, that takes through to the, to the final one, which is really my kind of unannounced bonus strategy. So I was pulling these slides together and I thought actually there's, um, there's a really good thing that I can share with you that I use when I'm sitting down with clients that just allows you to differentiate uh, or, or position 
the value that you can add through text message marketing. Because people often look at this and think, oh yeah, you can log into any system and upload a whole lot of numbers and and, uh, and just send out a blast and it costs you know five pay text. And if the business kind of looks at it that way, then they can think, well, that's not really there's not much much value there that's being delivered through that. Fundamentally, there are systems out there that do way more than uh, offering a text message blast where it's just a one-way text. You'll see yourself if you're texting in, um, you know, when you're texting in rapid to 6414, you'll see that actually the system will engage with you automatically and, and give you, um, a, you know, a much richer experience. So the question is how do you actually demonstrate that value to a client? And I'll show you here just through one example how you can position um, position that as a value proposition where they look at it and go, okay, wow, that's what it could mean in terms of my business bottom line. So let's show you what this is. And this is around all making it real for them. So one of the things I do is I calculate uh, future revenue just based upon uh, their campaign settings. But actually, I do it in such a way where I, uh, I ask the business to provide the numbers. So in this example here, um, I won't actually go and do it now and edit it because I'm not actually sure how it will work on this on the webinar, but um, I don't want to put the things up. Um, what I'm talking about here is you can actually escape, press escape while she's sitting in the presentation and enter in different numbers in the boxes. And based upon the numbers you enter, this is a, it has a spreadsheet embedded into the slide. It will then recalculate um, all the numbers within within it. So you can then say, okay, if you've got a thousand people in your list, you're sending out four promotions a month, you're getting so many people respond, and this is how much they spend, this is the kind of revenue that we can be generating through that particular campaign or through that particular strategy. Um, so this is kind of how you can then help make that real. If you're then comparing that to how much you want to charge them, um, and let's say you know you're going to be charging a monthly fee of let's say a thousand pounds for providing that service or that, that bundle of services, if they're comparing that thousand pounds with the kind of revenue that you can be generating, then uh, then you're making a really strong um, sort of statement around the value and the proposition that you're offering. So um, I think I will just see if I can test this out one second. I'm going to escape out of this and hopefully it doesn't fall over. So. I've done that now. So if I then double click on this and say, say for instance, the uh, redemption rate was actually uh, lower than that. Let's say it was 10%. And let's say they only spend, well, 20, 25 pounds, not 50 pounds. So I've now changed those numbers. And you can see that the actual um, the revenue figure as well, then recalculate on the back of that. And if you're doing that in conjunction with the business, then they've been party to that output. They're, they, they're buying into the output a lot more because they've contributed to, to it. So um, that was a bonus strategy. Let's just sum up around what we should have learned here. So I've shown you how you can create a, a mobile consulting business, and uh, there were three key steps there that we went through. I've taken you through three principles around how you can identify money clients. So that was around things like the client cash quadrant um, and, uh, and the capacity closer and, and understanding the demographics. I've taken you through how to create a mobile funnel. So you have the seven different levels that sat within that mobile funnel. I've shown you how you can earn three times more per email um, with the example I showed you there with daily deals looking at what you can be building up out to uh, clients uh, as part of the daily deal program. I've shown you three different business models that you can use to create a six-figure mobile consulting business. So you've got daily deals, you've got dedicated campaigns, and then you've got the full service uh, where you're acting as a full service agency. And then I showed you, breaking it down a bit more, those seven steps to mobile messaging. So I've shown you how you can actually implement a campaign um, to have people opt into your database, to get it off and out to them, and how you can then um, virally grow that database by having people share those offers, and, and ultimately how you can you know, deliver that satisfaction back to uh, the, the customer and also help the business secure more business. And finally, I showed you this golden rule for how you can build your list 
around the importance of actually generating trust and finding opportunities where that trust already exists between the people you want to subscribe and the uh, and the you know, the business or the third party that's going to help you grow that list. So that is it in terms of um, the content here. Um, what I would like to do before sort of handing you back to Suraj is, is just invite you to stay in touch. So um, as I said, my company name is Moshi Moby, uh, Moshi Moby Limited, and uh, we're a UK-based company. And you can find us on moshimoby.com. And there's uh, videos there and, and opportunities to download that free report and things like that. You can also follow me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is, is it's Stuart Murray. Um, and uh, I tend to uh, use that as a, a good way to uh, kind of get the message out to people. Um, so uh, to all means, follow me on, on Twitter. And then finally, and this I've done exclusively for uh, Rapid Leverage members, you can text in the word RAPID to 64414, and I'll give you the, that free report download, and also I'll give you a free 20-minute mobile consultation. So if you just go through that process, you'll see how that works. And, um, and actually, I'll get I'll get uh, information directly through to my mobile phone. Um, you know, if you're if you're wanting to connect with me that way. So that is uh, that is it in terms of uh, what I wanted to share with you today. Um, I'm amazed I've pretty much managed to run to time. We had a little hiccup there with the sound uh, early on. Um, Suraj, let me hand it back to you and uh, and ask whether there's uh, questions that people wanted to ask or, or and also you know, questions you want to ask. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, Stuart. I, I got a lot of value from that. Things that I, I hadn't thought about myself, um, uh, you you uncovered a few things, especially sort of the bonus strategy and um, about breaking it down. You know, I mean, uh, anyone who follows me online on Facebook and, and Twitter and what have you, you'll know that I like to break things down for myself and my clients in terms of the numbers. And that uh, little formula you've got going there and how you're able to, to break down potential return on investment is really, really important uh, for clients to see firsthand what they can, what, what, what they're going to get out of this. And I think that as a closing strategy, uh, that's excellent. So if anyone out there is going to adopt uh, mobile marketing into their business or in fact become a mobile marketing consultant, then things like that, what Stuart uh, was sharing with us, those strategies to close clients and the bonus strategy, absolutely brilliant. Um, Sure, there are a few questions. Uh, I'm going to ask you them here. So uh, Daryl on the call has asked if uh, you can tell us what is the service that you use to manage the text messages, the SMS messages, and the database that sits behind it, I guess, which holds all the phone numbers. Um, so what, what, is, what is the equivalent of, say, AWeber for the SMS marketing world? Okay, um, good question. Thanks, Daryl. Um, we've actually developed our own platform. So we've developed a platform from the ground up which um, stores all those numbers and also um, allows us to manage these campaigns to, you know, allows us to create keywords. Um, the number 64414 is actually our own dedicated uh, shortcode. So um, we, we, we read that shortcode from, directly from the, um, you know, the networks. And our, and our system plugs directly into the mobile network. So, um, so yes, yeah, so we've developed it from the ground up. Brilliant. Okay, uh, Daryl, I hope that answers your question. And I'm, 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 I, I know for a fact that Stuart is is open to having a conversation with you about that system and about using it in your business if, if that's what you were asking about. Uh, so, to so do get in touch with him and actually go through the process of of sending this text message to this number. Uh, so you can see exactly how it works. I tried it out earlier today before the webinar, and uh, we know within a few moments I received the, the reply uh, from the system. And I guess because we are marketers, we, we know what's going on. I can I can appreciate the mechanics behind what's happening. Um, but to, to I guess the, an untrained person or, or a, a customer, they may not uh, um, understand what's going on. And it looks really impressive. It, it feels very personalized to someone who doesn't know about this I mean, we all know about email marketing and how that all worked with autoresponders i guess this is you know an analogy to use is this is the equivalent of of aweber uh, but i'm uh, with with very different and very cool features that's that stuart's built into it um another question Stuart has been asked is 
is there a possibility? You know, I've actually seen this before as well. Um, is there a possibility to earn revenue from the text messages that are received? So I know you said that for for the customer sending the message, it costs them a, a standard network rate or a, a free message from their allowance. But I mean, yeah. I, I guess that's how, you know, shows like The X Factor and Britain's Got Talent make money where people send in their votes via text message, you know, like A, B or C or whatever, and they charge a pound yeah. per message and they make, you know, a million million pounds per ad break or whatever is is that a possibility yeah. with this system or is that not something that we should be looking at is that is that not quite um my my it is, it is a possibility i mean you what you'd need there for things like that is a premium uh short code okay so 6444 isn't a premium short code okay um but you'd need to have a number like that that was a premium designated number okay um you can do it what i would say though is two things one is it, it's fraught with issues if you do do it. Um, and secondly is there's other ways around it that people are generally more comfortable with. So let me explain what I mean by that. Um, in terms of the, the issues that, 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 that can be fraught around this is that if you're, because of the bad association there is with, with pre, people operating premium numbers where um, people have perhaps texted in thinking it was free and then found out later that they were kind of billed you know, six pounds on their mobile phone bill the following month. Because of because of the, the kind of issues around that that the industry has faced, um, the operator actually holds back that money for a period of time, and it's several months, which can have quite a significant impact on your cash flow whilst that money is being retained. And therefore, uh, as a business model, it's not necessarily the... Uh, the best way of necessarily collecting the money. It's quite efficient at an individual level, obviously, because if someone texts in and the operator collects it, then you know the money's coming in automatically. But also the operator takes a, a cut of that as well, which is significantly more than if you were, for instance, taking a payment through, say, PayPal or something like that. So the way that I would work it is I, if you were doing, for instance, and I'll give an example strategy that I'm talking with a client about right now, is that if you want to do something like that, let's give an example where you send out like a motivational message. Um, so if you were, if you, um, were somebody that had a, you know, a, 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 a following of people and you want to send out like a daily motivational message, what you're better off doing is actually um, fronting that entire service through a website and then um, manage all your payment collection something through that website and then all you then need to do is manage the interface between people joining that service and people leaving that service through that website with your your messaging platform. Right. And that way, people are very used to then how they pay. You know, people are very comfortable with paying with PayPal. People are very comfortable with paying via that method, you know, whether it be on a PC or on a, on a, on a mobile phone. So it makes more sense to have people pay you that way too because then they're comfortable with it and they're not, there's not going to be a barrier to them wanting to buy the service. Got it. Um, and then you just use use the platform to deliver the service. Got it. And, Fantastic. You know, that's the way I see it working. And you could be running a membership site that does exactly that. And the text messages that people are paying for are just a, a part and parcel of that membership site. Got it. And, and, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is why Stuart Murray is the mobile marketing expert, because all of that was new to me. I had no idea that, uh, you know, an operator would withhold the fees um it, but it makes perfect sense uh, now and 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 and, and, I, and like i said that that's why you are the expert um there were a few more questions but <laughs> there were there were a few more questions to it, but they've been answered through your other answers and through the, the end of the presentation so i won't repeat those um and uh, this, this this whole thing's being recorded anyway so if anyone does want to replay it at any time uh, and and fast forward past the the audio interruption we had earlier on they can do so um in fact, this would have been perfect to, uh, just a few a few weeks ago. I was speaking at a conference in Dubai where um, the speakers had to, at the end, our our pitch, if you will, was to vote for your favorite speaker. And it was text the speaker's yeah. name to whatever number it was. And it was it was almost, a, a, you know, like a, a primitive setup where there was a lady sitting outside with a mobile phone and collecting and was manually counting all the all the votes. So this would have been absolutely You're perfect for that. And um, seriously, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, you know, if if if, if, if I had um, organised that, then of course I would have gone with something a bit more professional like this. It would have looked a lot looked a lot, a lot better. But it's something I'll definitely make sure that they use in the future, especially in that part of the world where 
at conferences and seminars, you, you can't, you know, pitch from stage as, as uh, we all know, and uh, maybe not love so much in the UK and the US and, and Australia as well. But uh, uh, this would be perfect for that market. And I'll, I'll definitely put you in touch with the, the, the right people in Dubai and, and Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates. Um, but all that's left for me to yeah, say is great. thanks very much, Stuart, for your time. Uh, you, you've really uh, given us a lot of value here. The, the, the comments coming in are, are brilliant, very positive. You know, you're a great speaker and the value that you're providing is, 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 is very high as well. So thanks very much uh, to you, Stuart, for, for putting your time in this. For everyone listening to this call, you know, thank you for your time. It's just uh, almost 10 to, uh, just gone 10 to nine here in the UK uh, in the evening. So thank you for your time. I appreciate uh, you, you've taken out a few hours of your evening tonight. As always, the recording of this will be ready in, in a day or so and will be put inside the premium section of the Rapid Leverage Forum for all our premium members. And, uh, you know, if you want to want to join and, and get access to all the other webinars in there as well and the future webinars, it's only a one off lifetime membership. There's no monthly fee or anything like that. And we put in our products. So as part of the premium membership, our premium members on the call will know you'll get all the other products that I create in there for free. The Networking Ace Masterclass in there featuring some experts from around the world, uh, the Outsource Rookie course for uh, learning how to outsource things if you're new to outsourcing and all my future courses and, and webinars and what have you get thrown into the premium section as well so um if anyone does want to join rapidleverage.net that's the place to go that's all i'm going to say about that um for those listening live on the call i want to wish everyone a very happy christmas and uh, a brilliant new year coming up i hope 2013 brings everything uh, that you that you hope for your business and i hope this year has been great for you as well i look forward to helping our members grow their business throughout 2013 here in the UK and abroad, of course. Um, and if anyone's got any questions, you know, the normal place to find me, my, my door's always open, as they say, uh, or in, in this case, my, my, uh, my email is always open and accessible to everyone. So if uh, that no one's got any more questions, we're going to call it a night for today. And uh, I want to say thanks to Stuart again. Thanks to everyone for sticking around. We've thanks had a hundred percent retention rate which is just brilliant. I've never seen that before. Uh, so everyone who started the call is still on the call, which is brilliant. Thank you all very much and have a fantastic night uh, wherever you uh, may be watching this uh, from live or on the recording. Thanks very much. Thank you.